What's going on? So we're going to be looking at the Unreal Engine. In short, it's a very successful game engine that if you're a, a gamer, you've probably already played games that have been created with the Unreal Engine, at least one of its versions. There's four main versions, and we're going to be looking at the newest and latest version of the Unreal Engine, known as the Unreal Engine 4. And the best part about Unreal Engine 4? It's free. Yeah, as long as you have a computer, you can go ahead and download the Unreal Engine 4 and basically just get up and running with creating video games. It certainly has its own style. It's, it's sort of like Unity and it's sort of like Roblox, but it has its own unique style. And I'd say it's more like Unity than it is Roblox. And I love all three game engines, but it's really a matter of personal preference. And I'll go ahead and walk you through some of the basics of this application and its history. So for starters, it's developed by Epic Games, and it was first showcased in 1998 with the first-person shooter game Unreal. And this first-generation Unreal Engine integrated rendering, collision detection, AI, visibility, networking, scripting, and file system management into one complete engine. And the release of Unreal Tournament marked great strides in both network performance and Direct3D and OpenGL support. The engine became popular due to the modular engine architecture and the inclusion of a scripting language known as Unreal Script. From the start, the engine was designed in a way to be extensible and improved over multiple generations of games. And one of the games you might know besides Unreal and Unreal Tournament is Deus Ex. Next there was Unreal Engine 2, which was released in 2002 with America's Army, a free multiplayer shooter. And this generation saw the core code and rendering engine completely rewritten, and engine elements were also updated, with improved assets as well as adding support for the GameCube and the Xbox. An update called Unreal Engine 2.5 improved rendering performance and added vehicle physics, a particle system editor, and 64-bit support in Unreal Tournament 2004. And some of the games you might know from Unreal Engine 2 are Bioshock and several of the Brothers in Arms titles. And next there was Unreal Engine 3. And unlike Unreal Engine 2, which still supported fixed function pipeline, Unreal Engine 3 was designed to take advantage of fully programmable shader hardware. And all lighting calculations were done per pixel instead of per vertex. Unreal Engine 3 supports a gamma correct high dynamic range renderer. Initially, Unreal Engine 3 only supported Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 platforms, while Android and iOS were added later in 2010. OSX support was added in 2011. Some of the games you might know from the Unreal Engine 3 are Batman Arkham City, Borderlands 2, and the original Gears of War was a shooter that helped define Unreal Engine 3. In November of 2009, Epic released a free version of Unreal Engine 3's software development kit, or SDK, called the Unreal Development Kit, or UDK and it's available to the general public. And finally, we arrived to Unreal Engine 4, which is what we'll be using today. And on September 4th, 2014, Epic released Unreal Engine 4 to schools and universities for free. As of March 2nd, 2015, Unreal Engine 4 is available to everyone for free, and all future updates will be free. So all you gotta do is make an account at www.unrealengine.com and download the Epic Games Launcher, and through this you can download and run the Unreal Engine 4. So when you first launch the Unreal Editor for Unreal Engine 4, you're going to be presented with what they call the Project Browser. And you can create any number of different projects which can all be maintained and developed in parallel. I'm going to be showing you real quick how to make a first person shooter game. So by default it's going to show you the Projects tab and this shows a thumbnailed list of all the projects that have been discovered by the editor. All you got to do is just double click on the thumbnail to open that project. But what we're going to do is create a new project. So what we're going to do is go to the second tab, which is called the New Project tab. So in this section, you're presented with starting templates for your projects. The blank project creates a completely empty project, and the other templates fall into two categories, Blueprints Only or C++. And games generated by these two templates play the same way, with the same level design, character behavior, and camera layout. The difference is how the initial framework for the projects is created. With Blueprints, it is possible to create gameplay behavior in Unreal Editor without needing to write C++ code. However, just because you start with a Blueprint project doesn't mean you can't include C++ code in your project. With C++, the initial gameplay is defined with C++ code. We're going to be using the Blueprints tab, but in future videos I will show you all about this C++ tab. Alright, so what we're going to do is create a new project, and like I said, we'll create a first-person shooter style game. And we'll go ahead and click on first person. And if you look down here, there's certain project settings. And these allow you to set up different performance options for your project, depending on what type of hardware you are targeting. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and create project. And once you load it up, you're going to be presented with the level editor. This is where levels are created, viewed, and modified, mainly by placing, transforming, and editing the properties of actors. An actor is any object that can be placed into a level. At its most basic level, creating levels boils down to placing items in a map inside Unreal Editor. And these items may be world geometry, decorations in the form of brushes, static meshes, lights, player starts, weapons, or vehicles. Which items are added when is usually defined by the particular workflow used by the level design team. In this case, it's me and you. You can see there's a bunch of panels by default, and I'll go through each one just to show you what it is. You can see at the top, there's a tab bar and a menu bar. And so the tab bar provides the name of the level currently being edited. Tabs from other editor windows may be docked alongside this tab for a quick and easy navigation, kind of like Firefox. And the menu bar is just your standard menu bar. It provides access to general tools and commands that are used when working with levels in the editor. And if you look over here, there's a panel called the toolbar. This is a group of commands providing quick access to commonly used tools and operations. You can see there's a little disk icon here, and it says save, and this basically just saves the current level. And this next one, source control, allows you to connect to or assign your source control solution. Content opens the content browser, which displays all of your content assets contained in your game. This is where you go to create, import, and edit all content. Marketplace opens the Unreal Engine launcher to the Marketplace section, so you can get different models and features for your game. Settings displays the Settings menu, which provides easy access to commonly used options controlling selection, editing, and previewing aspects of the level editor. Blueprints provides access to create or edit any blueprints in the world. This menu gives you quick access to setting up the framework for your game. For example, game rules, player type, or HUD. Matinee enables you to create a new matinee sequence or edit any existing matinee sequences in the level. Build performs the build operation on all levels open in the editor. Building pre-calculates as much data as possible relating to various aspects of the level. For example, static lighting, such as light maps, shadows, or global illumination, and geometry are calculated during this process. You might also see the play button here, which starts the game in normal play mode. And finally over here, there is the launch button and this launches the current map on any of the supported platforms and you can see the main panel is the viewport panel right front and center the viewports are your window into the worlds you create in Unreal they can be navigated just as you would in a game or can be used in a more schematic design sense as you would for an architectural blueprint the Unreal Editor viewports contain a variety of tools and visualizers to help you see exactly the data you need by default, you see a single perspective viewport when you open the Unreal Editor. But it's actually deceiving because the viewport panel actually contains multiple viewports, which are laid out in a grid and any of which can be shown maximized. So you can minimize or maximize any of these viewports by clicking on the little icon in the top right here. And so you can see there's four viewports here. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with the default viewport. And you can change the view mode in this viewport if you click on the little button here. Mine says lit because it's in the lit view mode, which shows the final result of your scene once all the materials and lighting have been applied. Uh, there's also some other ones. I'll just go through a couple. Uh, unlit is a view mode that removes all lighting from the machine and shows you the base color only. Wireframe, which shows you all of the polygon edges in the scene. So let's switch it back to lit. And just for some of the basic controls, if you use your secondary mouse click and drag you can orbit around your scene change your perspective you can look up down and, and look all around but if you primary mouse click and drag you can actually move through the scene and you can see this default scene has some boxes and walls and this object right here this is actually our first person shooter you can see the the hands and the gun and uh, camera which is going to be our our eyes in this quote unquote game. So actually just to show you how it works, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play. It's it's already set up to where I can run around and or at least walk around and if I click the mouse button it shoots this little yellow ball. It's kinda of fun. And in this sense it's sorta of like Roblox where you can just basically start a game almost from a template and be able to just start creating immediately. And it's that immediate feedback, which I love, especially for beginners. 
and I'll show you how to go through and create your own first person shooter game um, in future videos but for now let's just go ahead and hit escape to stop it and continue on describing some of these panels so over on the side here you have the details panel and just to show you I'm gonna go ahead and select on one of the cubes there and you can see that this panel contains all the information, utilities, and functions specific to the current selection in the viewport. And in this case, I have a cube selected. It contains transform edit boxes for moving, rotating, and scaling actors, displays all of the editable properties for the selected actors, and provides quick access to additional editing functionality depending on the types of actors selected in the viewport. And right above the details panel, you see the world outliner panel. And this displays all of the actors within the scene in a hierarchical tree view. And actors can be selected and modified directly from the world outliner. And next, we're going to look over on the left here, and you see the modes panel, which contains a selection of various tool modes for the editor. These change the primary behavior of the level editor for a specialized task, such as placing new assets into the world, creating geometry brushes and volumes, painting on meshes, generating foliage, and sculpting landscapes. So we'll look at the five tools here. First starting with place mode, which allows you to place actors in your scene. For example, if I wanted to add a cone to the scene, I'd just go down and click on the cone and just drag it in. And you can see the cone is in the scene here, and I'm just gonna drop it. The paintbrush here toggles paint mode for painting vertex colors and textures on static mesh actors directly in the viewport. The landscape mode is for editing landscape terrains. Foliage mode is for painting instanced foliage. And finally, geometry editing is a mode for editing brushes to geometry. So that's just an overview of some of the panels. I added in a cone over here. Let's look at this cone just to show you how the quote unquote actors work. So I place the cone in here and you can see there's different arrows representing the different axes that you can move it along. So what I want to do is move it up the blue axis, the up and down axis, and pull it up just a little bit. Now if I wanted to rotate it, I could just click on this little rotate button right here. So I'm going to click on that and I can actually rotate the cone if I want. Or I could scale the cone if I click on the scale button here. So this is very similar to Unity if you've used that, or Roblox. But what I want to show you just as an intro video is how you can create a landscape, which is a very fun thing to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I use the mouse wheel, by the way, I should have mentioned that before, but the mouse wheel, you can probably hear it clicking on my mouse here. If you just pull back, roll the mouse wheel towards you, you can actually zoom out. And what I'm going to do is zoom all the way out and I'm going to click on the landscape button here and it's set to create a new landscape I'm just going to go ahead and drag down here and click create what it's going to do is insert a landscape right underneath of the default room that they have and actually what I want to do is zoom in on my character so I'm going to switch back to place mode here and what I want to do is find my first person character. It should be in this world outliner list here. I just got to find it. And there it is. It's right in front of me. The first person character object. And so what I'm going to do is push the F key on the keyboard to zoom into my character. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's just like Unity, actually. So what I'm going to do is drag our character up. And I'm going to move it outside of the room and place it over here outside. So when I go ahead and play the game, I should be outside of the room. Yep. So if you look, the room's there. And I got this whole world that I can modify. What I'm going to do is stop this. And I'm going to show you how you can modify the landscape. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click on the landscape button. And it's already set up so that I can just start sculpting the land with the sculpt tool. So what I'm going to do is just hover my mouse over, select where I want to sculpt, quote unquote, and just go ahead and click. And you can see I can create a mountain. Um, that was a little bit too big of a mountain. So what I'm going to do is undo that, just hold control and push Z. And let's go over here. I'll make a big mountain over here. 
and let's go ahead and make the brush size a little bit smaller so you can see there's a little menu item here for the brush size I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that to a little bit smaller and just go ahead and create some hills just to show you and I'm not gonna go too in-depth here just because in future videos I'll go in-depth and in how you can create your own level but I'm just gonna add some basic bumps to this and go ahead and hit play and that's it. I got my nice little landscape here. And I can even jump by hitting the space bar. So right off the bat, I'm running around in this game that was created with the Unreal Engine 4. So it's very quick. Um, if you notice, you can see that it says lighting needs to be rebuilt. And to fix that, basically all you got to do is click on this build drop down here. And you can click on this build lighting only and that that'll get rid of that error message so I hope you enjoyed this video I'm gonna be doing future tutorials on Unreal Engine and more I do all kinds of different applications so look out for future videos and have an awesome day